All right, Jennifer asks, Bill Gates has bought a bunch of farmland recently. Actually, he's been buying farmland uh, since the financial crisis. I think since 2008, he's been buying a lot of farmland. Uh, some people are freaking out. A lot of people are freaking out. A lot of people are freaking out. He's planning to starve us. Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> um, one of the reasons rich people buy farmland is because farmland is a fantastic hedge against inflation. Farmland is a great investment against bad times. Inflation, depression, civilizational collapse. You always need food. Land is always valuable. And uh, I know a lot of wealthy people who are not named Bill Gates, who after the 2008 financial crisis invested a lot of money into farmland. That investment has done phenomenally well. Uh, farmland has grown in value fantastically. With inflation now, you'd expect that people would have invested more into farmland because uh, as uh, everybody's been expecting inflation for a long time. Uh, so Bill Gates, just as part of his diversifying his asset bait, he's got a lot of money in the stock market, he's got a lot of money in venture capital, he's got a lot of money in all kinds of private businesses, and he's got a lot of money in farmland, which is part of the diversification. And when you're that rich, when you're that rich, um, then you're going to own a bunch of farmland if you want to invest in it. Diversification means a lot of money. Yeah, one of the questions you have to ask yourself is, is freedom good? Or is it just a desire? And I don't believe most people desire freedom. That's a sad point is, in most of human history, 99% of human history, maybe 99.9% .9 of human history, we have not been free. The fact that we have not been free in 99.9% .9 of human history maybe suggests that we do not desire freedom. And the reason we don't desire freedom is what I said earlier. The reason we don't desire freedom is we've been trained, we've been told that we cannot take care of ourselves. We cannot achieve happiness as individuals. We do not get to choose. We should not be able to choose what values to pursue and not pursue. It's good only if you have a perspective on the individual and his ability to pursue happiness, his ability to reason, his ability to know the world and to achieve success. Freedom is the condition by which, uh, this is a uh, uh, response to Ashton, freedom is the condition by which, uh, by which people can pursue their values based on their reason, with no coercion, no force, no authority imposed on them. Freedom is the pursuit of your values free of coercion. Pursuit of your rational values free of coercion. Freedom is there to protect the rational. Freedom is there to protect the valuer. Freedom is there to protect your ability to reason, to think, and then to act on those thoughts. And yes, it protects the irrational as well, but that's not its purpose. The purpose of freedom is to protect the good, to protect you from being able to live. And the fact is that most of humanity, most of the time, is wrong about most things. And what we need is a philosophical shift so that people value their own mind, people value their own life, people value their own reason, and, they, and people learn that they are capable of reason. And only then will people desire freedom, fight for freedom, and sustain freedom. In periods where individualism is on the rise and reason is on the rise, those are periods where people desire and value freedom, the Enlightenment, into the 19th century and into the 20th century. Periods where we don't respect the individual, where we view anything in terms of the collective, and where, importantly, we don't value reason, we value religion, we value mysticism, we value revelation, we value genes, we, 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 we denounce free will. Those are periods in which people don't desire freedom and they don't get freedom, where freedom is on the decline. We're living through a period like that right now. 
So freedom is an achievement. It is a massive achievement. It's why it's only been attained for so little time in human history. Yes, being capable of reason make freedom good, absolutely. That is the logical link. The logical link is between, between reason and freedom. It's why the, the rediscovery, the reassertion of the primacy of reason during the Enlightenment led to economic and political freedom. And you can't separate the two. And it's, it's, the, the link is, is, is straightforward. The idea that every individual can reason, that every individual can understand the world around him, and can choose his own rational values and pursue his own happiness, and that that is valuable. Happiness, individualism. But that it's possible through reason. Well, if you think about that, then people in the Enlightenment in the 18th century, they couldn't choose their profession. They did what their father did. They couldn't choose who to marry. They married who their parents assigned to them. They couldn't choose their political leader. That was assigned by aristocrats or whoever, or God or whatever. They couldn't choose how, where to live their lives. There were laws in England that said if you were born in Parish X, you had to stay in Parish X for the rest of your life. You had no choice. In the 18th century, they woke up and said, but wait a minute. If I can think for myself, if I can discover truth for myself, if I can use my mind, then why can't I make these choices? Why can't I choose where to live, who to marry, what job to take, and what political leader? I demand freedom. Why do I demand freedom? Because I can think, because I can make decisions for myself, because I can reason, because I can choose the values necessary for my own existence. I don't need the pope. I don't need a king. I don't need a philosopher king to tell me how to live, what to do. So you cannot get freedom in a society that doesn't respect reason. In a society that respects reason, people will demand their freedom because they want to use their minds. They want to make their own choices. And it doesn't matter how poor or how rich they are. A reasonable person, that is, a person who lives on the basis of reason will always always, always choose freedom. Most people have been taught they shouldn't use their mind. Most people have been taught they shouldn't think for themselves. Most people have been taught not to use their reason. And yes, most people, unfortunately, are unreasonable today with regard to many aspects of their life. That's why we're moving away from freedom. But that is a consequence of our educational system. That is not inherent in people. In the 18th century, most people discovered reason and demanded their freedom. And they will again sometime in the future. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.